Now, we'll start by taking a look at Primrose. Uh, Prima Rosa, the first rose of the year. Um, one of the, by way of introduction to this, one of the, uh, the, the primary considerations or elements in the evolution of flowering plants is the need to prevent self-pollination or to try to ensure cross-pollination. Uh, and since plants are fixed in place, uh, they need to enlist the help of animals, particularly insects and birds, or the wind, or sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes water as well, in order to effect this. Now, the, more, the most uh, immediately obvious way to do this is to have, have uh, male and female plants separate, but there are several other quite sophisticated strategies uh, that flowering plants have adopted in order to achieve the same end. And one of these is classically exemplified by the primrose. So if we look at the flower of primrose, uh, which is familiar to all, to all of us, you can see that five petals, you've got five petals, five heart-shaped petals, each with a splash of gold at the base. And the top part of the petal, uh, uh, of the five petals, is horizontal, forming this landing platform for the visiting insects. And in the case of the primrose, the nectar in the primrose is at the base of this, this, this tube. So you can see that it, it requires uh, insects which have a fairly long proboscis to be able to access the nectar. And that means that the main pollinators are, are, are solitary bees, uh, uh, long tongue flies like bee flies, and early butterflies, uh, particularly the brimstone. So that's the basic structure, structure of the flower, as I say, familiar to all of us. But if you look more closely, if you take out your hand lens, which is uh, an essential accessory for every responsible, awfully naturalist, uh, if you look at it with your hand lens, you'll see that at the mouth of the tube, very conspicuous, even without the hand lens you can see this, you can see that at the mouth of the tube where the five splashes of gold meet, there is what looks, it looks like the head of a pin. And this form of the primrose we describe as the pin-eyed form. Now, if you split the tube, you can do this, you can do it just by tearing the flower apart, or if you have your... Uh, if you have your blade to hand, you can split it down like that. You'll see that halfway down the tube, the, the, the stigma, that the pin, which is the stigma, is at the opening. But if you look, you'll see that halfway down the tube are the five anthers of the stamens. There they are. They're attached to the claw of the petal about halfway down. You've got five of them there. Now, I've torn them apart, of course, as you can see there. But that, that's the basic structure of the pin-eyed form of the primrose. But now, if we start to look at other primrose clumps, we'll see that, in fact, they're not all the same. So if we move across, for example, we'll have to take a look at that clump over there and see what we can see. If we take a look at this clump, Uh, now, at first glance, it's the same. Superficially, it's the same. But if you get your hand lens to it, you'll see that this is, this is quite different. Because at the mouth of the tube, at the entrance to the tube, you don't have the pinhead we saw before. You don't have the stigma. What you have is, in fact, the five answers of the stamens. Uh, and in this case, the, the, the anthers are attached to the top of the tube. Uh, and this form of the primrose flower is referred to as thrum-eyed. The term thrum is not used much nowadays, but thrum was the, the, the frayed edge of a fabric on a loom. That's where the term, term, term comes from. So what we've got there is the, the stamens. And again, if you take your, your blade or otherwise just split the tube down the middle, you'll see that in this form of the flower, in the thrumite form of the flower, the pin of the stigma is halfway down the tube. You separate the bits and pieces and you'll see very clearly and obviously the pin is attached about halfway down the, the, the tube, the petal tube, the corolla tube. Now, the significance of this is 
that flowers of pinite form can only be pollinated by flowers of tromide form and vice versa, ensuring that cross-pollination will always take place. And the reason for that is this. If a bee is visiting a flower of tromide form, where you've got the five anthers at the top of the tube, uh, its head will immediately pick up the pollen. If that insect then flies to a flower of pinite form, the stigma will automatically come into contact with the pollen on the head of the pollinator and pollination has taken place. And that visitor will then, and only then, begin to probe down into the tube with its proboscis to access the nectar. And in doing so, it will come in contact with the anthers, which are halfway down the tube. And it will carry away that pollen on its subsequent visits. In other words, the pollen adhering to the proboscis can only come in contact with the stigma on tromide flowers and vice versa. Effectively, effectively make, make, making cross-pollination almost, almost inevitable. Um, and the relative positions of stigma and anthers is the most obvious difference between the two forms. And in fact, there are lots of other more subtle differences as well. For example, uh, the pollen grains in somide flowers are considerably larger than the pollen grains in pinide flowers because they will be germinating on the stigma of the pinite flower and will have further to travel down the style, the stalk, uh, in order to, to, to re reach the ovary at, at, at the bottom. The botanical term for this is dimorphy. This primrose is, is the classic example of a dimorphic blossom. Uh, now, it's, 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 it's difficult to follow that when you're just watching me or trying to follow my explanation of it. What this is intended to do is to get you out to look at the wood which is within the five kilometre radius of your where you live and see it for yourself. You can do it with primrose for another couple of weeks maybe, although you can see here primrose is very rapidly disappearing in the, in the growth of the green. Uh, but what you could also do is uh, you, the same strategy, precisely the same strategy, is, is a, a, adopted by, by cowslips. And cowslips are only now just beginning to come into full flower. So you can see the whole story uh, very elegantly and more brightly, in a sense, illustrated in the flowers of, of cowslips. So, it's over to you.